I resonate with everything that you said. But the kind of work, especially Lakshadweep, is my, it's in some sense also my way of responding to um, a very rich conversation, especially in the context of Kerala, which, uh, you know, historians of Indian Ocean Studies, artists like you and your colleagues who generated a discourse about, uh, you know, Kerala as a cosmopolitan space. You know, in many ways, I think that in the last decade, uh, around the Muslims project, around Indian Ocean Studies, around the Binale and the conversations, also in the context of a very territorially, hermeneutically sealed nationalism rising and rising, I think it's a Malayali way of speaking back to it, talking about our cosmopolitan connections, which go you know, back in history to uh, you know, times unknown and so on, and also to the very rich social and cultural fabric which you know, has been uh, produced by this, this uh, sort of um, connections and so on. So in a way, so and how do you think about this? In a, in a, I work in a, I, so that is we, we jokingly used to say in my JNU years that uh, you know, if you do film and media, you are always already modern. You have nothing else to do, right? You don't have ancient film history. You don't have ancient cinema, etc. So, I, uh, how do you start thinking about some of these issues, questions that you know Mr. Komu raised in his, uh, you know, very very succinct kind of introduction? Um, and uh, as someone who started looking outside the boundary of the Indian nation state, start looking at the Gulf. Some things which I started increasingly, not just me, but also colleagues in the larger field of film studies, is to think about film and media as not, and it also ha started happening historically, right? If, if media was a very portable mechanism in the last century, say till 1950s, it has turned into a very fluid kind of, uh, of uh, you know, fluid matter more and more, right? It's no longer portable. And uh, so there are these are so in many ways the the kind of connectivities of the ocean, the fluid nature of the ocean, etc., is something which is also really something which you can think of happening in the context of media as well. So there are many contexts in which I think about media as related to ocean, and that's not what I'm going to do today. I just wanted to locate my work and the larger. So just one small example. Something which I just recently, uh, you know, concluded writing, which is going to pu be published, is about precisely about the thinking about the what has what was the ocean for Kerala's media modernity, and I, I would I, I say that it has done a lot because the the way in which media modernity actually entered the Indian coast was mainly through the kind of pirated, you know as a pirated modernity, right? If we had, we all know that Microsoft had just probably one license in India. You know, everything else was pirated. So this is not me saying, there are scholars who have established how piracy has been very central to Indian media modernity. The whole of coastal India, particularly the, uh, you know, the Malabar coast, has been a very important site for the, for media goods to come in, right? Starting from the VHS and the audio cassettes and so on. And there is a there is a whole economy booming, booming, and the media culture emerging around it. So that's one way in which I see see it. But there are also various other ways in which I look into the ocean, the ocean's relationship to media, and uh, so on and so forth. So it's not uh, so it's it's in these senses that I think about media and uh, you know uh, media history um, and so on. So Lakshadweep, how did I arrive at Lakshadweep? I mean, I was responding to, as all of us were, when, you know, this particular moment where Lakshadweep's autonomy, administrative autonomy was challenged, there were various questions that, you know, suddenly we started thinking about Lakshadweep slightly differently, right? We were invited to think about Lakshadweep as just, not, just, just beyond the question of Dibhalva and the question of, you know, this beautiful place where you can take a, uh, you know, a trip. Um, as, a, as, a, uh, as a tourist site and so on, we were really invited by contemporary developments to think about um, what is Lakshadweep. 
So in, in, in many ways, it's, it's also something which I started looking into in this, in the, in the particular context of that, very honestly. Uh, it was also uh, uh, kind of, I was also prodded by this really fantastic project happening at the King's College London, who brought out a Lakshadweep dossier, um, in which many of us wrote short pieces. It was a blog. Uh, we wrote short pieces. Mahmoud Kuria wrote a short piece on what is, uh, you know, you would be very familiar with his work, most probably. Um, wrote on what are the textual sources on Lakshadweep. I wrote about what are what has been, uh, you know, the different kinds of um, uh, media representations of Lakshadweep in mainstream media. Um, a set of scholars who work on environmental questions wrote about, uh, you know, uh, coastal sovereignty uh, and questions of displacement, changes that are going to happen in the land, uh, you know, related. Uh, resource sharing, administration, etc. There's another beautiful work by a scholar called Lakshmi uh, who wrote about a sea lexicon uh, of Lakshadweep. So there are, uh, there is this, so I was in, I, in many ways we were all, uh, scholars were invited to think about, you know, how do we think about uh, Lakshadweep? And, and, and I would say that largely we thought of, if we thought of Lakshadweep as some kind of a, just a, a geographical and cultural edge of Kerala, this was an invitation to revisit that, you know, accepted sort of position and start thinking of Lakshadweep in its, you know, in its autonomy, in its heterogeneity, in its, you know, also I would say in its uh, connectivity, but also certain kinds of insularity and disconnections. So this is the context from which I started looking into it. Uh, another, so if Indian Ocean Studies is something which inspired me to uh, to think about uh, some of these questions and there is this very very material uh, political context which raised new questions there is also the question of the anthropocene and the question of environmental issues which is also a very big invitation to think about uh, you know luxury in the contemporary so i come into it um, through all of this and um, so some of the questions that really, you know, when, when all of this is happening, we also recognize that, uh, we also immediately recognize that this is, this is probably a very uh, important moment of neoliberal extraction that is unfolding in front of us. Many, many scholars who wrote about it also, also, um, you know, drew parallels from similar projects happening around the world, etc. So I started focusing in on, you know, to use a film language, I started zooming in uh, to think about Lakshadweep as um, in the larger context of islands, right? So islands, the insularity of islands, the connections of islands, what is islandness, what does it produce textually and otherwise? These are some of the questions that I started, uh, started thinking about in the, uh, in the last uh, century. Um, this this was this was a something which I I you know developed for when I did a presentation in Amsterdam last year. Um, but I want you to watch um, a 1974 film Dweeper by Ramu Kairiat, um, and we'll come back to that later. And I think this is the time I I start looking for Chenna. <laughs> Is this okay? Yeah, this works. All right. Uh, so this is. Just, I'm just going to play it for five minutes, and we'll return to it right, when we when we start talking about the films. <laughs>
Quickly ask you what um, does anyone have any thoughts on this? Any thoughts on this? Any thoughts on the title sequence? What happens in the title sequence? No? What are the filmmakers doing? And I'm sure that all of you make films. There's nobody in Kerala who doesn't make a film. And yet to me, someone who hasn't made a film. Except me in this room. So, what are they doing in the... What have they done in the first sequence? Anyone wants to give a thought? There's no right answer. Or there's no wrong answer. <laughs> Should be that way. No wrong answer here. Yes? Huh? They've so basically taken a map, right? They've taken a map and zoomed in and zoomed in and zoomed in and then the, um, so, and the map is sort of, it starts from the globe and it starts showing the, uh, the Indian subconscious and then moves to the sea and it just moves to the islands. And then the, the actual, uh, you know, the camera, the, the uh, location shoot then starts from Kerala, right? And there is, there is much uh, happening here, right? This is something which you will, this cartographer's eye is something which you will see again and again in the film. But we'll return to that later. Uh, I just want to spend, a, and spend, a, uh, spend, a, spend some time uh, thinking about some, a couple of other questions which would be useful. Chema, can we have the lights? Yeah. So, um, so one one wrestles with the, with so many questions when uh, you know looking at uh, something like Lakshadweep. One of the first things which uh, there is an ask there is why Lakshadweep is thought as you know distinctly there is a distinction that is attributed to Lakshadweep. Uh, you know some things came up in the earlier uh, conversation um, as ruled by the Arakil family um, and so on. Um, it's also seen as described as mostly very homogeneous because of the uh, of being a the only uh, muslim union territory with indigenous islam in the sense that it has a um, uh, it has the status of scheduled tribes right probably a very distinct group which has uh, which is not which you don't see uh, you know very commonly in the indian subcontinent so there is a distinctiveness attributed to it but far from it, as, as Mr. Komu was pointing out earlier, it has also been a very complex site of extremely complex uh, context, contact zone of various kinds of, you know, um, cultural exchanges and other kinds of exchanges, right? So if we don't, so usually when we use the term cryol, we, what we mean is that there is, a, there is a hint towards biological kind of interactions in the sense that it's usually described uh, to talk about how populations as they started moving in the new world, how they started intermixing, producing a zone of racial intermixing and cultural intermixing and so on. Whereas if you think about it, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, uh, making use of uh, the scholar Ananya Jahanara Kabir, who, hints, who actually talks more about cryolization, which is not about biological references, but more about how there is a radiating sense of cultural interaction, right? In food, in architecture, in music, in, uh, in, in other kinds of cultural uh, sites of production. That's what she means by trialization, which is more about proximity and not necessarily about biological interaction. So um, Lakshadweep, let's also you know, understand why there is a kind of homogeneity of populations and so on. There is, a, there is a simultaneously a, 
um, the, it's, it's a very complex zone of trialization, right? So, uh, so that's why when mainstream Malayalis look at uh, Lakshadweep languages, we are really trying hard to find Malayalam words in it, right? We say that, oh, oh this is Malayalam, this is Malayalam, etc. So the, the invitation is to think about it as a, is a, as a language which, it is a cryolized language as, you know, many other languages are, right? Or we are constantly trying to find out, to think about how alike the dweeb uh, residents are to us, etc. So the, so what I'm, what I mean to say is that cryolization is an important, helpful concept in understanding something like the, an island like Lakshadweep. Um, also, um, parallelly, uh, what I would uh, want to flag at this point is that what is the merit and what is the use of looking at literature and media, or let's say cinema, to understand an island, right? I mean, I would say that all kinds of cultural textual representations are uh, also a certain kind of archives, especially in the absence of, you know, in the void of other kinds of textual archives. I mean, and if you, if you look at anyone who is, and I, and I assume that being historians, uh, engaged with uh, a zone like Lakshadweep, you would be familiar. Textual resources and archival resources in Lakshadweep are between far and few. Right? So there is, there, is, there is much relevance to look at textual representations to, to understand a, a context like this. My example is not from Lakshadweep, but something which is probably you know, good to remember at this time is how relevant has been Amitabh Gosha's Hungry Tide in understanding for a, for a far more, you know, available history of Sundarbans, right? The Marijapi incident, uh, you know, certain kinds of policies, objection there, and so on and so forth. But in other words, I'm also trying to say that it's a, it's, it's, uh, it's a, it's, since we, you are also equally interested in thinking about cinema in your curriculum, it's also an invitation to think about uh, how to think of film and media, etc., to study questions that you are interested in. Um, so a, a small uh, deflection here, uh, we don't have such a rich history of, uh, you know, film and media production in, in um, Lakshadweep, really for important reason, it was a union territory, um, very measured kind of administrative policies around uh, film and media availability. Um, up until 1990s, um, so most films were actually, it's a, the largest number of films which circulated in Lakshadi from very, uh, you know, limited sources one could gather. Uh, one was, it was uh, more available as public screenings done in uh, uh, done in uh, public institutions, you know, like a, uh, like a, like a school, um, in a school compound or something like that. Mostly film exhibition documentaries were screened, some Malayalam films were screened, occasional Hindi films were screened, etc. So there is a, it's as a, as a zone of such interaction with media up until the 1990s, which is the emergence of DVDs and CDs and so on and so forth. This kind of, uh, you know, film and media presence in Lakshadweep is kind of very limited. But there is a more and more increasing presence of radio in the, uh, you know, as an aside, uh, uh, radio has a much more presence in the islands, um, also as an important communicative infrastructure to communicate among islands and within islands and so on. So there is a communicative infrastructure of listening which has emerged in Lakshadweep. Uh, much more strongly than around film and media. But things start changing in the 1980s. Um, uh, there, is a, there is one small document that I've come across where Keltron started a uh, production unit in, uh, in Lakshadweep and they trade 10 women, 10 Lakshadweep women to make parts of Keltron, etc. This is, this is also part of, you know, industrial development, etc. Uh, that kind of imagination, not necessarily to have more and more media. But as we see, the 90s and the kind of, you know, breaking up of the older communication models uh, and techniques and methods also opens up, uh, you know, the film and media market in a major way. Um, also, communication starts moving to more satellite-based communication, which makes Lakshadweep a much more uh, richer site of receiving, actually not exactly production, receiving more, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
media from outside. Um, private television channels started, uh, uh, you know, you could get private television channels, uh, like Asia Net and Surya and so on, uh, by the uh, late uh, 2000. So there is an increasing communicative infrastructure to, to, to remember. Um, so there are two, two, two sections of this talk. One is that at first I want to talk about, think about what is the mainstream imagination, right? What has been the mainstream imagination in the, about Lakshadweep? What kind of film and media has been made on that? This is not an exhaustive list, right? Uh, and also because of very difficult conditions of production, there is very little work. There is, so before, um, before, um, say, so the, say 1974 is Dweeper, and I think the next film, Malayalam film, which is set in uh, Lakshadweep, fully set in Lakshadweep, is perhaps the recent film, 2017 or 2018, Anarkali, uh, 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 Prithviraj uh, film, which is set in Lakshadweep. So there is, a, so you can imagine the, the kind of gap. It's, I mean, in terms of years, it's more than more than half a century, right? So, um, or like close to half a century, right? So, um, so that's there. So in the meanwhile, the kind of production which is happening is mainly in the hands of the Indian state. So, um, so we have here then. Um, so let me also try to play this. I think. You know this song. So I want you to listen to this, right? And, and think about the cartographer's eye, which I talked about. Uh, pay careful attention to the, the, the dialogue, the monologue rather. He's writing. So this, I mean, in a way, you can also think of Weber, the film, not only about Lakshadweep but also about the mainland, right? Because um, what happens in the film, has anybody watched the film? Anyone? It's Ramu Karyat's film. Um, you know who's Ramu Karyat, who made Chennai, right? You know that. So this is something which I come across in film classes every now and then. Um, I had a, in, in a class I was asking, I had, a, I had showed a Satyajit Ray film and uh, Sharma, Sharma Tagore appeared and Someone told me that that's, oh, that's Sarah Ali Khan's grandmother. So, <laughs> so she's not Chakla Chagot. So, uh, <clears throat> do watch Chenbin, okay? Do watch, uh, uh, do watch old Malayalam films. So, uh, uh, Chenbin, uh, well, no, uh, uh, Dweeper is a film where, uh, I mean, the first part of the film has quite an interesting sort of, you know, it, 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 it situates what is going to unfold um, in interesting ways. So, there is, and a huge unemployment. Young men are actually, actually really talking about going to the employment exchange. There is, there is palpable sort of, you know, despair among them of being jobless and, you know, cashless and um, families to depend on, etc. And families who are, who are supposed to provide for and so on. So in that whole tension, the protagonist who would perhaps most probably be an upper caste man uh, from, a, from a village, an educated family, his father is a schoolmaster, etc., uh, who gets his uh, letter from the, the uh, government saying that you know, he's offered a job in Lakshadweep right, to, to go to the, to go and teach in the uh, school there. Uh, and he's leaving. So, I mean, he's, he, he has no other options and he's leaving. Uh, so, Deva is this unknown land, uh, you know, you don't know much about it. The travel is, is very tricky, choppy sea, and for mainland Malayalis, it's a, it's a very difficult kind of terrain to sort of navigate. Uh, so he goes there and then he settles down and he makes friends. There are these very, it's a, it's a pristine place, um, very loving people, loving, uh, you know, very, very, very warm exchanges. Then he finally returns. He has a, he has a, uh, you know, um, a fiance here. He's coming back and so on. So, so there is no dramatic things happening in the film. It's in a sense, you can say that most part of the film is like a documentary, right? In many ways, it's something which borrows very much from a, what you call a documentary realism, right? So because it has to, and you will see that if other films are bound by the compulsion to tell a story in a fast pace, to have more things happening. In this film, what you see is that there is more happening around. 
be, precisely because you know it is Lakshadweep and you need to kind of enumerate it as if you are uh, doing it in a ethnographic realist kind of fashion right so the um, and then um, so there are several parts of the film where uh, you have this exchanges between the residents of the island and the um, and the and the people who are outsiders who come from mainland India to teach to work in government offices etc so this is largely the constant the demographic constitution of the of luxury violence as well as you know so I'm going to play this and you can tell me what you think of the um, of the monologue he's writing a letter to his father describing how is this life here ജനങ്ങൾ <laughs> ദ്വീപിന്റെ പകുതി ഭാഗവും വിജനമാണ് ശാന്തരും സമാധാന പ്രേമികളുമായ ഒരു കൂട്ടം മനുഷ്യരുടെ വിഹാര രംഗം പട്ടികളില്ലാത്ത നാട് കാട്ടുമൃഗങ്ങളോ വിഷജന്തുക്കളോ ഇവിടെ ഇല്ല കടലിനോട് മല്ലിട്ട് മീൻപിടുത്തവുമായി കഴിയുന്ന പുരുഷന്മാർ അലയാഴയുടെ മടുത്തട്ടിൽ അമ്മാനമാണി കളിക്കുന്ന അവരുടെ നൗഹുകൾ ശുചിത്വബോധമുള്ള ജനത കരകൗശലത്തിൽ അഗ്രഗണ്യരാണിവർ കരയോട് തൊട്ടുകിടക്കുന്ന തെങ്ങ് ഇവരുടെയും കൽപ്പക വൃക്ഷമാണ് നല്ലതരം തെങ്ങിന് ലക്ഷദ്വീപ് പ്രസിദ്ധമാണല്ലോ അതെ മലയാളത്തിൽ പറഞ്ഞോളൂ ഒരു കുഴപ്പമില്ല ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞത് നേരത്തെ What's happening in this video? Why are you talking about it? Huh? And?
Yeah, interesting. So there is, there is, there are, I mean, uh, many things happening here, of course. There is, uh, I mean, it's, it's very benevolent when he's describing them, describing them in actually nice terms, right? But there is the sense of the us and the other, right? Which is very much, uh, which is underlying all of this. There is also cinematically thinking, it's quite interesting that, you know, there is an interesting move, I think, which is happening there. Because, you know, for the static maps, which you, there's an, it's almost shot like an aerial view, anyone you would have recognized that, right? It's like an aerial view uh, of it. And I think that's really masterful to do that in the, to have that imagination in the uh, 1970s to make you almost feel that it's quite similar to an aerial view uh, that you do now. So uh, from the staticity of maps, then it comes down to Kerala and then it travels, right, to the, so actually there are sequences where the boat trip is also shown from Kochi to um, uh, to um, to Kavarathi, I think, and um, and he, then he talks about you know the geography and so on. So all the uh, the other set of films which we uh, come across in this time is the films division documentaries on Lakshadweep. Right? I mean, there are only really good two documentaries. One is by this uh, uh, filmmaker called Enes Thapa, uh, and the other is which is called Lakshadweep, huh? and the other is uh, something called Everlasting Now by this uh, uh, you know, uh, filmmaker called Umesh Saigal. So um, in all of them, but in, in, in every, every kind of film, uh, media sort of representation, uh, in the video, I don't know about literary work so much, but in film and media representation, you will see Lakshadweep also is, of course, it's pristine. It's always, you know, it's kind of a uh, uh, utopia. Uh, it's also uh, a very something which refers to a very deep geological time. That's a, that's a, that's a reference which keeps coming up. Uh, Visavi Lakshadweep, right? It's, it's, it's our deep geological time that you find in Lakshadweep. So this, um, uh, what is, uh, uh, you know, so, uh, and there are also all of these films also, interestingly, which you don't see much in narrative films, they're also always sort of drawn to deep geological time, but also atmospheric elements, water, animals, fish. And so there is a reference to the tuna and all here, right? I mean, you cut to the, um, I have some footage of the, I don't know, I mean, that's, I don't find it worth asking this generation of people, but there used to be this Doordarshan program called Surabi. You know, how many of you remember? Surabi has this un unedited footage, a lot of footage, which is all about, you know, how to, uh, of, of underwater fish, uh, you know, all the uh, uh, coral uh, elements, the deep, the blue sea, the endless blue sea, this kind of thing. Um, and there is, there is no film that you will see, I haven't watched an Arkali, by the way, I don't know whether it has, but I haven't seen any film which doesn't have reference to this human, non-human interaction about Lakshadweep. So in a way, Lakshadweep also forces a certain narrative on the films, is what I'm saying, right? He's also asking the question, is there a point in thinking of Lakshadweep as separate, our island separate, etc. I think there is merit in thinking about islands, deltas, lands, oceans, etc. as having their own ways of uh, structuring narratives, right? I mean, anybody who has made a film knows that you might have a script, you want to go and shoot. You start shooting, there are, there are things which decide many things on the narrative, right? The light will tell you that, oh, you have to do this, right? And then you might change your angle. So quite like that, I, I want to sort of put forward this idea that, you know, as an island, actually, Lakshadweep has a certain way of, not just way, it also, all these aspects of, which are more about ecology, about um, the lay of the land, it's cultural, as cultural space, etc. It also structures the films and so on, which have emerged there. Um, now let me cut to, uh, to, a, to a film which I procured from Films Division of India. This is set in the, it's a 20 minutes long film. Should we watch the film or should we watch just 10 seconds? 10 seconds maybe, right? So, um, so where will I find it, um, Shema? In the folder? folder? 
Bye. Yeah, the new folder file. You copied it. Oh, this one. Okay, yeah. Yes. So let's watch this. I mean, as a background, of course, um, I know, I'm not sure that everybody is familiar with. Has anybody watched the film distribution documentary in India? All wrong questions, huh? I'm asking you. So, uh, film distribution documentaries were information documentaries produced by uh, the Indian um, state. It was a separate body established called Film Distribution, employed some of our best cinematographers and directors and so on, technicians basically, and creators, who, uh, you know, who, who, who were sometimes shooting routine stuff, where did the Prime Minister go watch announcement he or she made, etc. But they were also making uh, documentaries which are specific, right? Like about the Bakran Angle, about... So you'll see about all over India, there are these kind of a humongous amount of documentary production. And I don't know how many of you noticed that the film distribution was shut down recently and amalgamated with the National Film Corporation, right? NFC. Um, so I managed to procure some of the film distribution documentary just before it shut down. Um, the film division is an interesting body in itself, I mean it's a different conversation, I can't add that here. But very often you will see in the early days of film division, they are quite like colonial photographers do. They go map and they narrate in this what is called, what has come to be described by Indian film scholars as a God's own voice, right? You are told, you know, I mean this voice that, oh this, this is Bakran Angle and this is happening here, this will turn India into this, etc. So this kind of a voice very patronizing, very of a, of a British accented voice as well. Some of these documentaries are very available online. I mean, for example, this, if anybody is interested, there's this uh, scholar called Peter Sutores who has a book, book called Visions of Development. It has an accompanying website as well, uh, uh, where he has put up many documentaries that he's talking about. It's also great aim in teaching and so on for faculty. So, um, so we look at that such, uh, material you can discern that this is what is happening there um which is which is basically supposed to inform you about things educate you about things but around 1980s there is significant change and some experimentation happening within the the film division cinematographic you know uh, enterprise and there are very key people there like sn shastri and Thapa and so on and umesh segal falls into this this film by umesh segal is a is very different from what you otherwise have, I mean, this is a, for you, I would have loved to show you the earlier news reels, etc. So then you will really understand what transition is happening here. But if you look at it, um, this is the, um, you know, this is what is, um, let me open the everlasting now and we'll watch a little bit of everlasting now and you will know what. Should I just click it or should I just open it in the... Oh, okay. Yeah, use VLC. As I boarded the ship at Cochin, more than my body ached. My mind was tormented with doubt. What of the persistent backache, the tensions of job and business? Would the islands provide the refuge I sought or prove a prison, a beautiful gulag?
With the first breath of sea breeze, these doubts started clearing. Within a week, the pain was gone. Where months of medication, diathermy and traction had failed, what worked? The crisp morning air and refreshing dips in crystal clear lagoons? strolls under a cloud-dotted sky along pearly white palm fringed beaches or description of social economic kind of questions uh, whereas here it is it is more a description of the landscape and more uh, you know kind of pleasantry sort of thing and she thinks that it's a limitation I think we should we should think about that question right so um, so if what we largely see right is different kinds of mainland uh, description whether it is in the in the first film Viva there is an analysis happening about uh, you know what kind of a space is this, and its uh, uh, and its social economic things and isolation and stuff. Here, what you see is someone who is rushing or running away from the um, from the space of the city, from the conflicts of the city, looking for some sort of you know uh, some sort of redemption. So it becomes a sp redemptive space. You go to Lakshadweep, you go to an island to to kind of redeem yourself, recuperate yourself, etc. So in, in both cases, but we, what we see is that there is a very sharp us and them coming up, right? And this actually shifts in Dweeper, if you see the entire film, it quickly shifts to a civilizational question. I mean, at some point in Dweeper, the, uh, you know, the, the teacher, you know, played by Joes, who's actually an Ernakulan resident for the younger generation. So the, uh, he comes back, uh, he's visiting his village back, and uh, this, this family with whom he gets very attached, they visit uh, mainland Kerala with him. And before leaving, they can't take this youngest son with them, um, who is in the film as, as kind of portrayed as a little bit within quotes, dim witted and so on. So he's not accompanying the family and he's asked what is that you want to get from, you know, when they come back from the mainland. What do you want to see, etc. And they say they want to see an, an elephant and a bus. Right? I mean, it's sweet and cute, but as soon as they arrive here, it's a they're bewildered by the presence of trains and cars, and I mean, it's it's a, it's almost presented as a very as very incredulous people who, you know, who, who don't know much, right? Who has to who has to be civilized into modern spaces, etc. So, so they are good people, they are nice people, but they are not very civilized, right? So this you see across, you know, in in uh, in all of this production. But something which also for us to notice at this point is the shift from all of this kind of descriptions to thinking about, you know, so, so of course in, in all of these descriptions, it's a space outside, it's at the edge of the Indian national territory, it has certain specific characteristics, etc. But increasingly, have you watched anything which is where there is any reference to the luxury violence? Do you remember any recent films? 
web series, anything. Anarkali is also pretty. Anarkali, yes. Anarkali is, is also, he is very distraught, he has yet had a, you know, heartbreak and then he goes to the island, right? Um, what about, what about Malik? Does anybody remember Malik? Yeah. Is there actually with Malik? What is happening in Malik? Yeah, there Lakshadeep is a terrorist hideout in Mali, right? Or um, have you watched the, the the Amazon Prime series with Manoj Bajpayee called The Family Man? Right? It actually begins with a sequence where uh, within quotes Islamic terrorists are returning from somewhere, right? And, and actually, uh, you know, using expletives and there is this violent moment. That's how the series begins. The very first episode of the of the series, where they are actually coming from Lakshadweep, right? The, the the one film which got an award, the National Film Awards, I forget the year, which is a film made by a mainland Malayali uh, in the Jassari language called Sinjar. The film is called Sinjar. I have not been able to get a copy of the film. Sinjar has a very, very interesting and a very, you know, very... Uh, complicated sort of you know scenario uh, in the uh, thematically which is that two women from Lakshadweep has gone to Syria right and they have been Islamic politicized in Syria right and they get into all kinds of troubles and challenges and then finally they return to to Lakshadweep right and we all know that none of this has much historical reference, right? They are only projections of a very increasingly territorially, um, you know, sort of getting powerful Indian nation state, which is actually kind of projecting its own anxieties and fears towards something, a small set of land which is lying at the edge of the... Now, all of you know the history of Lakshadweep and, and how it came to be part of Indian nation. So it's basically the fears and anxieties which increasingly gets the island, you know, constituted as a kind of, not just that it's on the edge, but it's also kind of dangerous to have something like this at the edge, right? It's not entirely incorporated. And we all know that this is also part of the, the I mean, there are of course questions of extracting the resources of the island. Uh, which which ties itself to global neoliberal economies emerging, but also questions of tourism making it more productive, Com accompanied with the spheres of national securitization as well. So this is this is the larger context in which this happens. But um, it's it might also be might be significant for us to to conclude uh, by watching a little bit of this. So there has been a post two thousands. There has been uh, quite, a, uh, quite a number of, you know, digital productions emerging from the, uh, from uh, Lakshadweep. And I would say that they are more, you know, habituations rather than, you know, projections from the outside. There are no visions from the outside, etc. But rather something which talks about island life, right? It talks about crisis. It talks about breaking down. It talks about... Uh, it talks about, uh, you know, uh, infrastructure breaking down. And Aisha Fatima, who spoke up during the whole, uh, you know, uh, the controversy, the not the controversy, the, the administrative uh, measures on Lakshadweep, has a film uh, which is actually about the hospital infrastructure breakdown. Again, it's not available on YouTube or any, any uh, public sites. Um, this might be, you know, this, this should actually help us think about how is it, what does it mean to live in an island, you know, habituate, habituate oneself in an island, create, right, what, I mean, rather than, let's not think about it as not just media. How is it to create in an island, right? So, um, and, and another term which I would like to use uh, in this particular context, we talked about prioritization earlier. A term which I would like to use and, uh, you know, which you can explore further, uh, is uh, what is called graphic politics. Right? This is a gra uh, graphic, uh, graphic politics. What I mean is something which is put forward uh, in the context of 
tribes and tribal languages in India, which has had a, had a very, very, and we have linguists around, so uh, very interesting kind of uh, turn in the recent past. Uh, so for example, many tribal languages entered the digitized, computerized uh, kind of era without having that very flourishing uh, presence of print and other kinds of things, right? They entered into the, directly through the oral, into this, uh, you know, new codified, computerized kind of languages. Santali is one kind of, one that kind of a language. So, um, some of the anthropologists have recently, some anthropological works on Santals and so on, has actually pointed towards this kind of a graphic politics, which is a, which is that, which is not just language politics. It's, it's also about a certain graphicness, right, which computer sort of mediates between language and visuality and so on. So that has been really important in many tribal languages. I say, and then I start looking at it, and then I have, I, I looked at a number of films. Interestingly, they also subtitle for the mainland Malayalis, right? They're not subtitling in English. They're not subtitling it in, in, in Hindi, uh, not Arabic, not Urdu, anything. I mean, these are all you know, adjacent area, they subtitle it in Malayalam. Uh, there are a number of films like that. So this is one film which I just thought, you know, just to get a sense of what happens there. And there are, um, and they, they actually makes us think of, uh, you know, questions which are, not just questions, but life, right? Living with, with, with many things, not just politics, but just also uh, with your language uh, and so on. It's, these are made in Jassari, these are made in Mal, etc. I don't know whether I'm saying it right. M-A-H-L is its English, you know, um, uh, how it is alphabetized in English. Um, these are made in, in Lakshadweep languages with subtitles. Uh, so let's watch this one for a little, uh, you know, just, just five minutes and then I'll conclude and we can open it to questions if any. ഫറേപ്പിക്കായാലോ അടിച്ചു പറഞ്ഞു 
ാണ്ടേ ഓ പിന്നെ എന്നെ പറയണ്ടേ പിന്നെ എന്നെ പറവാ എന്നാ പത്തന മട്ട കട്ടി വീര കവീര കാട്ടി ഓങ്കിൻ ഓനാ ഉൾ മുള്ളിൽ നിന്ന് ഞാൻ എടുക്കും കാക്ക ആർലാദ് എന്നിലാ നിന്നല കുറി ചാലി ഫണി കണ താലേ വരണ്ടാന്ന് അന്നെ ഒരാ അടിച്ചേ അല്ല വെറുതെ ആരെ അടിക്കാലോ വെറുതെ ഇല്ല വീരക്ക അടി കേ പാത അടിച്ചി വീരക്ക ആർല അടിച്ചത് അന്തർ അതിന് mainland enclaving of the islands there is the i mean it's more for us right most of this imagination is for us think of umesh saigal they have to you know someone is rushing from the mad city to the pristine island right someone is moving from an unemployed kerala to a to a different place and trying to civilize them i mean deva is actually about civilizing the the island um from all of that if we if we move to uh, to the contemporary films that are coming out of luckily uh, what one can and and if you see very in the early this two two different sections of films are fervently sort of insisting on connection and integration <coughs> the island media of the recent past i would argue is actually about particularity about fiction about interruption about materiality and in in some ways you will also see as you look at them resistance right um uh, so about about, about failing infrastructure there's a film which i watched which is actually about running around the island to just capture the 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 satellite waves right just for communication uh, or the film that i mentioned of of aisha sultana who's about aisha sultana right or am i mistaken aisha sultana or aisha, aisha sultana yeah on about about breaking health infrastructures and the crisis um the question that then needs to be asked in the context of this kind of emergent media uh, is what do these local instances of analytical existence through mundane habituations of media work present to us there is growing attention to the critical foundations of connections where people things ideals legal systems could demonstrate instability violence and invisibility at the very nodes of the connected world right so uh, what i'm trying to say is that there is a connected world we have an imagination connected world 
what happens at the nodes of the connected world? Do we see certain kinds of tensions, frictions, disconnections, etc.? It's a question to ask, which, which these media actually pose, I think. Um, so the, the, and all of this collectively, this kind of work from the, from the luxury uh, you know, media work, spark certain thinking about the geopolitics and the ecology of islands <coughs> and prompt self-reflection about the prioritization of you know certain kinds of non-fictional sources for island studies right and also ocean studies right? many of us sitting here are interested in thinking about oceanic connections but it also then poses questions of what sources will be used right so i hope that i address some of the concerns that are relevant to you and I'll stop there and if there are any questions I'm happy to take it.